If you can build web apps in .NET, stop watching the next tutorial. I've been there, wasted hours on videos that taught everything except what actually mattered. In this video, I'll show you how to think clearly about building .NET web apps, whether you're using MVC, Razer Pages or Blazor, and how to avoid wasting time on the wrong things early on. Let's get into it. Before writing a single line of code, the first thing you need to decide is what framework you're going to use. In .NET, your main options are ASP.NET Core MVC, Razer Pages and Blazor. So which one do you pick? Here's the simple answer. If you want any kind of interactivity on the front end, like real-time updates, dynamic forms or modern UI features, go with Blazor. It lets you write all your code in C-sharp, both backend and frontend, without needing JavaScript or React or anything else. If you don't need that kind of interactivity, or if you're building something more traditional, like a content site, an admin dashboard, or a basic CRUD system, MVC is the default choice and the most flexible one. Razer Pages is another option, great for mostly static pages, like landing pages or content-heavy sites where there aren't many moving parts. You pick the tool based on what the app needs to do, not based on what's trending. Once you've picked the framework, don't start building your app from top to bottom. Instead, focus on the MVP, the minimum viable product. Let me give you a real example. Let's say you want to build an e-commerce app. You don't need to build the whole catalog, cart and checkout flow on day one. Start with one thing, a buy button, then figure out how to connect that to a payment processor like Stripe. That alone will teach you how to send HTTP requests, how to handle external APIs and how to process basic payments. Another example, if you're building a job board, don't design the whole site. Start with just the post a job form, learn how to store a new job in the database and display it back to the user. This is how I approach every app. Before writing any code, I ask myself, can I build the core functionality? Then I research how to do it, read some docs, watch some videos, and only then do I start coding. Now that you've tested the core idea, it's time to lay the foundation of the app. If you're brand new to the framework, start by building a few simple apps first, just to get a feel for how it works. Learn the folder structure, understand how files connect, get comfortable fixing basic errors. This will save you from so much pain later. Next, ask yourself, does your app need a database? In most real world cases, yes. Unless your app is purely front-end, you'll need to learn how to connect to a database. In ASP.NET Core, that usually means SQL Server and Entity Framework Core, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now we're in the actual app. The first thing I usually start with is the models. These define the structure of the data, what the app stores, retrieves, and works with. For example, in a finance app, you might have a model like this. This model becomes a table in your database and each property becomes a column. To make that happen, you'll need to decide which database to use. .NET works with a bunch of databases. Pick one that fits your needs. If you're just starting out or building something small, SQLite or local SQL Server is a solid choice. For production level apps, SQL Server is usually the default in .NET environments. Next, set up Entity Framework Core as your object relational mapper. Entity Framework Core connects your c -sharp classes to the database. Instead of writing a raw SQL, you use c -sharp code. And Entity Framework handles the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Lastly, create your DB Context class. This class is a key part of Entity Framework Core. It acts as the bridge between your models and the database. Every time you interact with a database, whether saving a record or querying data, the DB context is what makes it happen. This is the backbone of your app. Once your data structure is set, now comes the logic. Just a quick reminder, if you want help with .NET development, you can get direct support and guidance inside the .NET Squad community. And you can start for free. Imagine learning a skill like programming and having a place to go whenever you're stuck or something isn't working in your code. You'll get monthly content on topics you vote for, maybe topics that are hard to find online or that you simply find difficult to understand. Plus, you'll connect with like-minded people to make learning easier. As I said, you can try it for for free, it's basically a week of free coaching. The link is in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. Now let's get back to the video. Controllers handle incoming requests. They decide which data to fetch, which view to return, and what logic to apply. Let's say a user visits the home page, the controller sends them to the home view. Let's say a user submits a form, the controller takes the data, runs a service, and shows the result. And here's something important. 
any complex logic like calling an API, sending an email, or handling business rules should go inside the service. Controllers just delegate, services do the work. You define your logic inside the service class and inject it into the controller when needed. That way, your app stays clean, testable, and easier to expand. Finally, the views. These are your pages, the stuff users actually see. In MVC or Razor pages, views are CSHTML files that mix HTML with C Sharp using something called the Razor syntax. You can do things like this or even full logic blocks. Views take the data from your controllers and display it in the browser. They're the final layer in the MVC pyramid. And that's how you build the core of any .NET web app. You choose the right framework, validate the MVP idea, set up your foundation, build models, handle logic in controllers and services, and display everything in views. From here, it's all about improving what you've built, styling the UI, writing better code, and making things more efficient. If you want to see this exact process in action, step by step, I've made a full project walkthrough that's on the screen right now. So click on it and I'll show you how it's done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.